ancient Sumerian technology. Boom, we got the supervisor out here helping today. Through here, do 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 do. Into the fuse box, okay, now what? Perfect, and we're committed. So the four wheel drive system works with a, a knob, to a switch button, switch button. It's got some indicators in it to tell you what position it's in. So um, this is the module, the transfer case control module. It's got some uh, power MOSFETs on there that drive the motor. It's got a little heat sink and some integrated circuits in it. So we got uh, some powers and some grounds. And then these other two are the drivers that actually control the motor. And then we have a couple um, inputs and outputs from the switch itself. Now this one uses a voltage divider or a LIN circuit like the, uh, so kind of like the door locks, we have a module, an input and an output. Here we have a module and input and output as well. So here is the transfer case control module. That's this guy. Then we have the shift motor, which is actually bolted to the transfer case, and then attached to that is the position. So as the module turns the motor, it doesn't have any idea where it's at unless this switch position switch tells it where it's at, so it knows to go which direction or, or not. So that's these two wires here are A and see they're labeled A, B, C, D because they did that back in the day because they cared about service techs. That, that's a joke, by the way. So we got power in. A or power ground, yeah, ground here. A and then we got B comes from this fuse up here. Power distribution fuse A20. That one says four by four under the hood. And then we got these two A, uh, C and D, which alternate the the voltage for the transfer case motor. So uh, see up here we have another fuse, which goes into the switch. Now all this fuse up here does is control the lights. That's all it does. Then we have a secondary fuse here, fuse 12, and that is the park neutral position sense. So this is what tells it if it's in neutral or not. So it doesn't necessarily power the module, but it sends the power signal in there to tell it what gear it's in. Because it really doesn't like to shift if it's, you know, in drive or reverse. So what do we got here? We got a sensor ground. We got a ground, we got a mode select, we got a high indicator, we got a low indicator, neutral, default indicator, ground, mode sense, mode sense. Okay, so this is the mode select ground that comes in here. Then we have our voltage divider here. Each one of these is a resistor that has a different value that then allows the signal to return through the switch and then back through this wire here into the supply voltage or, you know, vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. Basically what this is doing is changing the voltage from 5 volts to ground. It's it's complicated, but that's basically what it is. 5 volts comes in, the variable resistors change the voltage, and that's how the module knows what selection you've picked. Once it's picked that selection and it's got verification from the lights, it'll then send a ground to enable whichever light so what we have to do here is, first thing you do, powers the grounds immediately. That's the first thing you do. So we go in here, A connector right here, continuity to ground. We got OK, OK continuity to ground. B, we go to our fuse, check voltage at the fuse because we want to know if there's a break in this circuit. You know, it's, it's right here, so you can also just test it right here. If you have power here, then you're OK. If you don't have power here, then you have to go backwards. But, you know, since you're already under the hood checking these other fuses, Okay, so we got power, we got ground, we know that for sure. Now we can measure the continuity between these two here to make sure that the motor's connected. So that could be, you know, whatever that, that could be. It could be a hundred and something ohms, it could be some, some other number. So the next thing we do is we know that we got power, we know that we got ground, we know the motor's connected, is then we have to come over here to our five volts and we test here at this pin, A8 on uh, C2. So these are A across the top, B across the bottom. See, we got B1, B2, that's C1, C2, C3. So the newer cars, they just don't care. They just, you know, they don't label them at all. They just expect you to figure it out. So we can go here to 5 volt select B8, C2. So we go to pin C2, B, 
the row B, then we count over to 8. So if we measure on this pin on the harness, we should have 5 volts. If we do have 5 volts, then we need to go over here to the switch itself and measure for 5 volts there. If we do have 5 volts there, then we need to measure continuity between here, pin 5, all the way back over here to mode select, which is A1, C1. So we go over here to A, well, it's not A1, it's A, A6. So we can go C1, row A, pin 6. So we can measure continuity between there and there. So in this case, all the continuities were good, but there was no 5 volts coming out of this, this module. So... This module is dead. Same thing with this timer module. So, you know, there uh, the dates on here is um, 1990, 1999 Motorola. So, you know, it's 23 years old. Same thing here. So, if we go over to the car, the transfer case module lives on the other side of this kick panel. So, you got to pull the. Uh, you know the bolsters down here and get down to these connectors so this is the one with the power and the ground and then we have the motors and then these are c1 and c2 i don't know exactly remember which one it is i think this one's uh two because this yellow and blue wire corresponds over here to this yellow and blue wire which is the five volt signal so you have to take this all the way apart here to to get to that switch it's bolted to the front of that um module there so if we got to our continuities here and we have our power here and our grounds here then then we're you know we can kind of tell whether or not it's the switch or the module in our case there was no power coming out of the module so we can't test the switch it's possible that the switch itself is bad too but we won't know until the module is replaced the transfer case four-wheel drive saga continues so i got a new module uh, well, new, uh, used, and uh, plugged in. We didn't have any any change, so got to doing a little more looking. Now, my original diagnostic here, we actually measured the resistance of this, and it was like 108 ohms, which seemed high, uh, but it definitely had continuity to it. So um, I didn't really think too much about it, but I got the testing again with the uh, the meter last night, and. Uh, Measured across there and it had, it was like um, 30K or something, which is a lot. Now, I went ahead and picked up another one just so I could kind of reference what, what the normal uh, number would be. So this one is uh, 1.3 across these two pins here, and this one is totally open. So it definitely has continuity to it, but when I give it juice, we got no uh, action here. So I think that the transfer case module is actually detecting the resistance here and maybe putting in some sort of a detection voltage, which is how uh, <coughs> how the headlight and operative circuits work. It actually puts out a voltage, measures the drop across that circuit, and then that's how it knows to turn on your uh, headlight bad circuit. So maybe I'm thinking what's happening here is that the module is not detecting the correct resistance for the motor and not throwing the uh, five volt circuit on so it doesn't uh, you know try to operate without the system being complete so this one's kind of weird it's got this like goopy stuff on it which i'm not sure what exactly is going on here and it's got silicone all the way around this joint here so i'm guessing that uh somebody's been in this before you know maybe i don't know I'm just uh, kind of hypothesizing here so i'm going to I'm going to pop this motor cap off of here and just kind of take a look and see what it looks like inside there. Well, that was pretty uneventful. The cap just uh, merely covers the motor. But um, I don't really want to take the whole thing apart. I mean, I could, but it's still not... Um, see, we still got continuity in our, in our thing there, but it's just not moving. It's not even burping or burgling or gurgling or anything. So I'm guessing somebody's already kind of done this. That's why there's silicone all over here. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and throw this uh, reman motor in there and see what happens. So, this one has got me kind of stumped here. Um, I It's it's fixed now. Everything works, but I'll just explain why, why I say I'm stumped. Because uh, I think I might have missed something. Now, I wouldn't say it was misdiagnosed, but the tests were accurate. Now, what I think happened here was... Um, 
so see I can I can turn this on you know now and we have full full response and it it shifts probably can't hear it but so we had a number of problems here with this one uh, the module was bad because the motor the shift motor is basically seized up and it overdrove overloaded the circuit too many times I, I think that's that's my hypothesis anyway and that's that's what makes most sense so put a new shift motor in it after that one over there it tested good the first time you know it was a little bit high on the range scale but it's still still tested good i was able to juice it up at the connector down here with the power probe and it uh <coughs> and it would move so that's very interesting so um got a module module a motor and a module didn't make any difference i was able to see the lights power up for about two seconds here and then they went out so I went through the entire test procedure again to see if there's anything I missed. And there's there's still no 5 volts coming out of those two yellow and blue stripe wires there. One for the encoder motor and one for this that controls the uh, the voltage divider. So, just none of this makes any sense. So I was about to call the people I got the module from and be like, hey, this thing's junk. But uh, as we had tested originally here, the uh, timer module was actually bad. Door locks. So if we can hear this now, there's a relay clicking in there. So it's got to be one of these, one of these relays here has got to be for the door locks. So I'm wondering if just the relay is bad. Now that I plugged the timer module in, the four wheel drive came active. So my secondary hypothesis here is that this blue and uh, purple and yellow wire here that goes up to here. This is all the bus communication, the CCD, PCI, the, it's the bus, the bus, the interior bus. So what I was thinking is maybe this module sends a wake-up signal to that because as soon as I plugged this guy in, that came on. So I don't, I don't really know. That has to be it, because that circuit should have been tested individually, which it was, and everything showed that it had a bad module. So, does this send a wake-up signal to that? I'm not sure, but here we are.